got a pretty exciting deck today. This is, you know, just got Monkey Blade featuring Spellcitter Sprite. Spellcitter Sprite, I think, is kind of nuts right now. I was thinking a lot about this last night. The metagame, like, the, the top decks in the format are the Darcy Ragavan decks, Cascade decks, and Hammer Time. And Spellcitter Sprite is really, really good against all of those strategies. Mana curves are, like, close to an all-time low, if not at an all-time low. And Spellcitter Sprite is just definitely a card I'd want to be playing. No, I'm not playing Fairies here because that card sucks. Uh, I'm, it's just like, it's just like, also like all the all the cards cost zero and one mana, so not all, but mana curves are so low that you don't need to play like unplayable cards like Fairy Seer to make Spellcitter Sprite good. But maybe it is just so strong. Maybe like you you can you know, you get to make up for that speed by giving your Dimuliches a plus one counter in haste, and then they don't die to Bolt. So I'm I'm kind of uh, down to to try it maybe. Do you think there's a best Stoneblade deck in the meta or still being discovered? Um, well, the metagame's shifting a lot um, is one thing. Chancellor of the Forge revealed. The metagame is shifting a lot, so it's kind of hard to say. Um, I would probably say that I've been liking the Bantz list I've been playing a lot, but I also think that Spellstarter Sprite probably goes in that deck too. We're getting turn one killed. All right, well, this has been a good stream chat. <laughs> good stream chat. So they kill, so they, I know that they lost Sabine Spirit Guide, but how they kill you now is they play Mox Ambers. They go, they make, they play Mox Amber, Mox Amber, pris, one, uh, a 1-1 a one, one Pinted Prism, then another Mox Amber, then another Pinted Prism. And then they can uh, play a fourth Mox Amber and cast uh, Lab Maniac. I guess you actually don't even need to play the second Prism. Yeah, what a day, though. I'll make him do it, though. I mean, this matchup is probably fine, though. We've got a couple, of, only only two Force of Negations in the, uh, in the deck. But uh, we've got Fluster Storms. We have, some, we have a decent amount of counter magic. So don't even have that much. Dementia, appreciate you. Their extra mana is going to come from Mox Amber, or it should. How they can kill us is three Mox Ambers, or sorry, four four Mox Ambers and a Pintad Prism. We get to see that Bantlist today, maybe. Oh, they're playing Springleaf Drum instead of Pintad Prism. That makes sense. They cast Neo Form on turn one with uh, Chancellor of the Annex, or whatever, the Green Chancellor, not Annex. Tangle. Yeah, Chancellor of the Tangle gives you a green man on turn one. Do you think Sentinel's still good enough? Yeah, I feel like Sentinel's even better than it was when I was playing it. You could maybe play Esper instead of uh, Just Guy. But I feel like the Just Guy, the red sideboard cards are so good right now. But they've made green green. It's just Freeberg. Thank you for your subscription. I mean, there's a chance that they brick. We are going to play this out. And maybe they're doing something different than just Lad Maniac. Have they cast packs? There's a Summoner's Pack to their graveyard. The Eldritch Evolution, their Allosaurus Rider, four Laboratory Maniac. Weird. Okay, they've killed us though. I don't know why they're not. Yeah, weird line. Seems like we got some, I uh, could have some dead cards. Wear tear for like random defense grids, I guess. Just nothing else does anything. No, they 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 cast random morphos, Simon. Oh, I didn't see it, Alpha. Can you post it again in chat? I'm trying to make a blue red phoenixless phoenix. Okay. Kataki attacks. I guess you're right. They also I guess have box hammers in their deck. <laughs> 
Oh, the Kataki taxes our equipment. It's probably more relevant than wear tear. And sand's probably too slow. All right, keep this. We get to put back Kataki. For the most of five. So one thing I found like playing this deck is, or these like these blue red decks is that, in in my opinion, uh, Phoenix is 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 definitely a card you do want. Phoenix is really good in these strategies. Um, I'm not super high on Thing and Ice at the moment. I think that the card is like pretty slow and not necessarily that well positioned in the meta game, and just not that into it, I guess. Um, that, I also think I dislike Light at the Stage, although it is interesting. I feel like I would be playing Expressive Iteration instead because it's just a bit more powerful. But I guess I, I, I will admit I'm interested by Iteration. I think you've got like a fine draft, you know, overall though. I think I'm just gonna hold up my mana this turn, and I'm I think I'm a bit more inclined to go for feast and famine and start pressuring their hand rather than culture here with the amount of interaction I have. Is Demilch a horror? I don't think so. No. Card Wild Cantor. All right, they're still playing. Yeah, I think Iteration is just a much stronger card than Light Up the Stage. It's the guy that's I just would really recommend playing it if you're already blue red, like. Like light the stage is the card you play if you're just if you're just mono red instead I think. Well, the thing about Dimmy Lich and Thing in the Ice, I think the idea is that you can cast. Let's let this resolve. You can cast four spells, flip Thing in the Ice, and then you bounce Dimmy Lich, but you can just replay Dimmy Lich for zero mana. I think that's the idea, and maybe it's good. I I just I don't think that it is. Opinion on Dire Fleet Daredevil? Hmm. Make Pirate Tribal with Monkey. I guess I'll play Fire Ice actually over Kataki. Just like, or that does something. We only have two forces. Usually I'm a little more prepared. Well, the Flusterstorm is pretty good too. The card's particularly good against Pact of Negation. Can't believe I actually know the card, really? Dire Fleet Daredevil's a, a cube staple. <laughs> yeah, imagine preparing for Neo Form. I don't think you were supposed to. Just we did get killed on turn one today, huh? Jane's 15 months, welcome back. Appreciate you, buddy. Rest in peace, Simeon Spirit Guide. Maybe you did nothing wrong after all. I found that Light of Stage is pretty good at my own birds. Yeah, that was that was a, an issue I had when I was playing the Mono Red Phoenix deck. Uh, and if you play Expressive Iteration, you can like put the bird in your hand. I have to send this one back. My opponent's still making their mulligan decision. They mold a six, we'll join them. Going to five, they are also going to five. All right, easy keep. How do you play Emrakul in this list? You don't, you just sighted in against Mill. Uh, it, yeah, you just sighted in against Mill. I, I, I played a league of this deck off stream last night. It felt pretty good. I played against, you know, like, <laughs> Hammer Time and a uh, Cascade deck and two Ragavan Darcy decks and I lost to Mill. Even though I feel like Sprite's pretty good against Mill too. Uh, the 
like historically stone forge mystic decks i think struggle against the mill matchup um so i, I do want a cyborg card for it so we've got the emrakul on the board now yeah, although now like like tasha's if they exile your if they exile your uh emrakul tasha's really does get you can they yeah they, they can also surgical response to the graveyard trigger and then Tasha's, if it hits Emrakul, exiles. And then it also all the other cards Tasha's hits get exiled anyways. So I think that probably what you want to try to do in the matchup is like save your counter spells for specifically Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And then, you know, just try to... Sorry about the lawnmower. Um... Yeah, save your counter spells for Tasha's. And then just let Emrakul, you know, shuffle. Well, the last time the lawnmower was out there, everybody said they couldn't hear it. Springleaf Drum is kind of cool in Neoform. I'm kind of digging it. I think it enables like a lot of turn two kills. I don't know. I, they might just play like one copy, but they might. Maybe they should play more. Is it possible to replace this list bolts with pass? Um. I mean, it, to do that, you would remove the Lightning Bolts from your deck, and then you would add Path to Exile. That's not something I would recommend doing. This is a format de dominated by Ragavan and Darcy, and like just having one mana removal that like deck doesn't line up well against those cards is awkward. Um, but uh, if you're if you feel like Path to Exile is better than Bolt, then you should just not be playing Blue White probably. What's the, the idea for McCool inside? It's good against Mill. Rocker Rick, yeah. See, if we have, just having Path in a spot like this is just so devastating. I'm gonna wait to bolt the Ragavan until their combat step to play around Dash Ragavan. One class without Mentor. Mentor is also like a card I've considered, in fact, I haven't made it very far, and I, I probably will never end up, to be honest, I probably will never end up playing the Monk class, but this is all I've got so far. Monk class, Metamorphose, Mentor, General Ro Rockerick? Rock, Rockerick. And that's all I got. But, and maybe I'll figure it out one day, maybe I won't. <laughs> but, uh, I, I do think it plays well with Mentor. Like, Mentor's got, you know, discounting the three... Turning Mentor into a potential two-mana spell seems pretty interesting. Yeah, it might not be good, but it might be fun. Hmm. I think I don't want to play Stoneforge Mystic into two open mana here. Especially when we can just, you know, hopefully go, like, Counterspell Expressive Iteration into Untap Slam to Fairy. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Pyromancer is pretty underpowered, but it might work in a deck like that. It's also true, like, like Monk class triggers M Mentor, uh, but it doesn't trigger uh, Pyromancer. Rest of Iteration in the Monk class deck? Well, it doesn't get re the cost doesn't get reduced, but I guess you can cast it as your first spell. All right, we're getting closer. I'm <laughs> getting closer all the time. So it looks like the Jerry T. Grixis stack. You want to counter spell? Tomaz, thank you for your subscription. Appreciate you, buddy. This deck of paper, I love it. Yeah, this deck's awesome. So if they're playing the Jerry T. list, there's the only counter magic is Drown in the Lock. So I'm pretty sure I can slam to Fairy. A deck tech for Doom Vendor. To die down, holy heat, I guess. Ragavan, Grimgully, Clothis. This is quite. Is this a uh, bard class? Yeah, it is. Interesting. Hmm. So my, my main thought is that I am not of the opinion that the Bard class is going to be a very competitive card in Modern, where, like, you're spending four mana, you're getting to, like, I don't know, 
They do have heat. I don't have blue card for fours, unfortunately. I, I think I'm not a believer in the Bard class. Uh, I would love to be wrong about that, though, because the card is really cool. All right, so I think I'm going to do both that. Dash Ragavan, cast Stoneforge if I don't hit something better. All right, that's something better. Or at least I want to get this value, you know. Um, I think Grim Gully is really underpowered. There's got to be something better than that. I do like the Clothuses, of course. I think the Druidic Vow is is also seems like it's probably a bit underpowered. Um, I'm gonna cast Stoneforge first. If it gets countered, Darcy has Delirium. Don't like Oath of Chandra either. Like with with Oath of Chandra, you're spending. Um, hmm. Out of skill, I think. With Oath of Chandra, you're spending. Um, it this card becomes a sorcery speed lightning bolt when you have the the Bard class going. Uh, four Dwarven Mine is also seems really weird to me in this deck. I don't really understand why they're there. I'm not sure like what other good legendary creatures there are in Gruul, but this just feels like it's not it, you know? <sighs> hmm. I think I'm just gonna let Stoneforge die. Get my Delirium. And four, four Dwarven Mines so weird with two forests and a wolf run. The Red Green Seder Legend. Yeah, the Red Green Seder Legend, that one's good. Yeah, if anybody in chat has suggestions for good Gruul legends, it's not something I've been thinking too much about, but... I do feel like there's a lot of room. I also think Grist is a bit weird. I, I would, like Grist, like splashing for Grist seems weird too, where it's not like you don't even get the full cost reduction. So I would, I'd probably stick to straight red green too. Those are, those are my general thoughts, but you probably need to scour Scryfall and find all the good uh, targets. Uh, I think we graveyard Sword of Beast and Famine. Let's play around one piece of interaction here by dash, just dashing Ragvan holding up fours. Yeah, Clothus is in there. It doesn't have to be multicolor, but it, the costs only get reduced by red green if you're um, if you are multicolor. But Questing Beast, oh no, oh no, I clicked. Through. I my my stop was gone. Ugh, what a punt. If they have a removal spell, it's not that different, I guess. Um, yeah, Questing Beast entering with an extra counter is nice. Well, that stinks. Is any of the three Rada good? I think the, the wait, the, 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 the Gali is good. I guess I'm confusing those two. Two mana, two mana Rada might be good, yeah. I kind of like that card. Okay, so it looks like they probably would have drowned their Ragavan anyways. But then we would have hit with, with the Ragavan. Bar class makes Huntmaster two job. Huntmaster's not legendary. Maybe it should be, but that's that's a conversation for somebody else. All right, drawing that, I'm just gonna try uh, Ragavan again. Again, with my opponent not putting Luris in their hand, I think that their last card has to be Snapcaster Mage if they're playing the Jerry T list. The new legendary and gruel, the two mana, two two pack tactics. Um, I was right about it being Snapcaster, by the way. Two mana, two two pack tactics. I don't, I don't remember what that card is. I do know, I do like the two mana, three three with pack tactics, but that one's not legendary for this deck. You can maybe play Rurik Thar. Rurik Thar becomes four mana all of a sudden. That card's like potentially a good sideboard card, at least, right? <laughs> Best possible, baby. Let's go. What are the issues with Jerry T list? Should I play Grixis over Red Black? I, I think I still like Red Black for these, you know, for these uh, monkey Darcy uh, Loris decks. I might try Grixis, but my issues with the Jerry T list is that the main one is that the, I think he's playing way too many Snapcasters. I would play maybe one Snapcaster. But I think I think Snapcaster is just not that good a card in the deck. Um, 
Also, like, like I would eat one hundred percent of the time play the fourth expressive iteration before the first Snapcaster Mage. Um, so that's that's another thing I would really recommend is playing the fourth iteration. I would probably be on the fourth drown in the lock, but I would maybe try to like think about it a bit more before I was like confidently going to submit the four drown in the locks. I think this is how I want to sideboard. But that's that's the big thing is like I, I really really feel like four snapcasters is way too many and I say this as someone who absolutely loves snapcaster mage snapcaster mage is one of my favorite cards will you ever just gonna hear you I, I might yeah like I, I do think that the chalice control decks are like probably like still decent for kind of the same reasons why I, I like spell starter sprite so much there's just so many zero and one mana spells right now this is definitely a good spell starter sprite matchup what happened to the saga banning talk? People like actually tried to beat the card and found out the card's super beatable. And people actually like tried to beat it instead of just saying, ah, a good card. <laughs> a six mana three for one. I can't beat that. Isn't Hammer the current best deck? Yeah, the card's also beatable. Like the hammer has hammer has just like kind of emerged as like the top deck of the format last weekend, but that's just like the natural ebb and flow. Decks will move in. Are they the best deck for a little bit? We'll see how long they're like best deck for. Do new decks come emerge to beat them? Do decks do decks do new decks come and have good matchups against Hammer Time? The new decks come and have good matchups against those decks, and there's a cycle, an ebb and flow in the metagame, and then that's a good metagame, but. If uh, Hammer Time is just the best deck forever, then that's usually when we have a problem. Are we still feel are we still talking about Hot Master of the Fells in 2021? I guess we are, yeah. This hand's great. No Crooks and Jerry's list. I thought Jerry was playing one Crooks of main, one Crooks of side. I might be wrong, but yeah, I would also definitely play like probably two Crookses in the main of Grixis. It's just Freyberg gifting five subs. That's super nice of you. Got a gifted sub from Freyberg. Make sure to thank them. Do you also think there should be no rules meaning attached to super types? <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Of course. Hmm, so if we go for a resting piece here and we don't draw a non-fetch land they can drown in the locket so i think i'd like to go for ragavan with fluster storm up matchy thank you for your subscription and, and rack to rock with your subscription too it's very nice hope to see some new subscribers get on the hype train everybody bye Just let that one go. Ragavan's a pretty fragile creature in this matchup. All right, Darcy, way less good against Rest in Peace. Which deck plays more than four of a single basic? Merfolk Hammer Time? I don't know. I didn't study for this quiz. Horse Father Deluxe, two months. Welcome back. Hello, Asparagus Mike. It's Connor from high school. I see you have an added Nickel Bolas Dragon Gods list. Typical. The Hollywood Hills of my Lamborghini account are overflowing. But you do you keep casting Archbrain's Charm, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Horse. Why Big Elders you took Nexus Fate a spot against Mill? Uh, I only really like Nexus and decks that can have a, that can get up to seven mana kind of consistently, like like Just Guy Wildfire could. This deck has a much lower mana curve. Put a card on top. Let's Fluster Storm this. This is deck tech. Okay. It's way too far up. Can, who, who who did I miss it from? 
Doom Vendor. No, I thought we did Doom Vendor. Yeah, we did, we talked about we already talked about the Bard class. Unless there's a different one. This one, okay. I, I guess I I scrolled up, but I missed it again. Maybe I just like skipped this one and went straight to Doom. Orzov Asmo. Hmm. Okay, so my first thought here is I think you're playing one too many equipments. I probably would just go ahead and recommend cutting the Sword of Fire Ice. I think that it, maybe four equipments is fine if you're playing flicker effects. We only have two wisps. Yeah, I would recommend cutting a... Uh, let me go to Prismatic Ending this. I, I want to save Lightning Bolt for um, Ragavan. Um... Yeah, I think I think that you're playing too many equipments. I would recommend cutting the Feast and Famine. I think you might be playing too few lands. Urza Saga like often plays as a land. I think you probably want to be on like 23. 22 might be fine, but I, I feel like I'd be inclined to play one more land. Um, I also feel like Skyclave Apparition isn't necessarily super good in your list. In my opinion, Skyclave Apparition tends to shine in decks that play either Teferi Time Raveler, uh, Wall of Omens, or... Um... There's one more that I usually like to pair Skyclave with. But the idea is that it, the idea is that you want to be able to like make the token not that impactful and Teferi Time Raveler, Wall of Omens, uh, do that. But this is cool. I think this list is cool. Um, I don't. I'm don't. Yeah, so I think cut those sort of fire ice for another land. I'm not sure exactly what that land should be. Maybe another clearing. Three clearings, kind of a lot. Maybe another pathway. I like the chalices in the side. I like the needle on the side. Uh, Fracture is probably not super good. Maybe fine. Yeah, fra I probably I don't I don't really know exactly what these fractures are for. If if they're for like the if you're if the, if you're just looking to play a disenchant effect, uh, I I feel like there are maybe better options and, and maybe there's not. I'd have to like really look. I guess you can't play like the art. Of, you can't play like Kataki. Of course. Cool list for sure. Yeah, I, I try. I, I was I was messing around with uh, some different versions this morning of this deck, and there I would be lying if I said I didn't have a few different Riptide Laboratory shells for a Spell Study Sprite. I thought for sure this was going to be Thoughtseize. All right, so they shouldn't have too many counter spells for this. Yeah. Vindicates for the white black deck. Uh, Vindicates kind of slow. But it, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem ludicrous to play that card. If Colgon's command terminate, okay, totally fine. Okay. Oh, they have Ragavan. Okay, they def definitely could claw back with Ragavan. So thankfully, they I milled over a land for me. <sighs> Man. <laughs> a discard spell would be pretty funny to hit here. I think I do want to bobble now. Try to find a they 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 have a bobble on the top of their library. Oh sorry, no, enter the exile zone. And the reveal zone, I think. Okay, yeah, prismatic ending, not too good against Ragavan. Is there anything they could hit off Ragavan that would make me want to bounce the batter skull now? I don't have any I don't have any uh, sh shatter effects, so no. Should probably cast that, right? Yeah. Winter Dawn is coming back. I don't know, Panda. I know. I know. Like last week, I said they're coming back this week, but uh, or I, I, I just think I'm just gonna do my own thing for a while. Not you. It's me. 
What am I doing with right clicking every now and then? It's probably some kind of tick that I don't uh, realize is happening, I guess. I'm gonna block with the germ token. I don't really know what this attack means. Find out, huh? Yeah, if it's just unholy heat, my germ token, I just get to equip the batter skull and Terragavan, so. Not sure if this was the, the move by our opponent. You know. Um, I don't have any white mana. Uh, it's hard for, to mulligan spell stutter sprite on the play, huh? Emrakul is for the mill matchup. Mill is like pretty popular at the moment and pretty good against decks like ours. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I also, I also think that a big issue with the Just Guy Stoneblade decks that people were playing was their their curve was just a bit too high. Just being on like twenty one lands, no four drops, just felt pretty good. The spin crashing footfall is definitely a good uh, spell starter sprite matchup. Um, although not being able to play Stoneforge Mystic here is kind of bad. Although I guess it you know might may just have died to a burn spell. Do I shock to play around ice? I don't think so. What's my opinion on Urza Saga at this point? Um, was the fear that every deck would play it premature? Absolutely, and I don't. You know, I'm not trying to brag too much, but I was also saying that that the the panic around Urza Saga was like pretty unnecessary when it was happening. We do kind of need to draw land here, man. Well, yeah, we're gonna get. Oh, oh sorry, it's it's uh one more suspend counter. Sorry, that was coming down next turn. Is there's a saga overrated? Well, it absolutely was overrated when people were saying it was definitely gonna get banned. The the card is just super beatable. I mean, I, like you do have to play sideboard cards for it if you're a fair deck. But like a lot of unfair decks just have good saga matchups. They have subtlety, we were pretty dead. Yeah, but now I think it's about properly rated. Right, let's pack it in. I think this is our sideboard plan. Yo, know, Teferi also helps a lot in this matchup. Caldric or Batter Skull can uh, go toe to toe with some rhinos. Ragavan on the play is pretty good. Is Mill Sheep in the format? Yeah, it's picking up in popularity. So I mean, if you if you have a bad Mill matchup without a Eldrazi in the sideboard, I think you should play one. Like I think this deck has a bad Mill matchup without a sideboard Eldrazi. But if you can just still beat Mill without it, you don't need one. I use the restroom. Be right back. Alright. <clears throat> Why isn't Eldrazi needed for mill? Well, it's just pretty good if it's in your deck, your opponent, like most of their cards don't do anything. I the reason is because if it goes to the graveyard, it shuffles your graveyard back into your library. Overall, image two is more successful than image one in terms of changing modern. Uh well if you if your only metric of grading is changing modern. I would, I guess I would disagree with that. I'm gonna get, I think, Feast and Famine here. Uh, you know, MH1, you know, made Hogak tier, literally tier zero, you know, made a brand new deck literally tier zero until, until several cards were banned. And then after that, the Urza deck was tier, <laughs> tier zero until several cards were banned, so. I would say that MH2 was much better balance wise, and then also didn't change modern as much as MH1 did. If I were t if we're talking after bands, I think MH2 has changed more. I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, yes.
You've been pretty adamant about Larissa and Burn. Do you envision the main deck changing any way with either Darcy Bobble? Yeah, I think I think Darcy plus Bobble is probably something that Burn players should be ex uh, experimenting with. I've been talking to a friend of mine who is you know doing exactly that. Um. You know, that's got the burn players have to figure it out themselves, you know. Hmm. How did you get my numbers bolt to that bolt? That's insider info. I think it was good to counter that. Still want to get too behind on board. I, I would love to, you know, be able to spell Starter Sprite, some of their, their Cascades, and then on Slap Slam Sword, hit them, untap all my mana. Oh, I probably should have... How many endings did I trim? Trim bolts instead of endings? Mm, maybe bolts are better because of Borrower. Maybe we'll do like a 3-3 split. Also pretty nice that you can't... Um, force of Negation Sprite. Can Mystical Dispute it? Yeah, yeah, the idea is that this this card is very good in the meta game of the Cascade decks and the Ragavan Darcy decks. In Hammer Time too. So we can try to play around Mystical Dispute by using Flusterstorm here. Flusterstorm is also maybe um, not gonna be live for too many more turns. Untap land would be really nice. Untap land maybe wins the game here. I guess they could have force and then untap cascade. I guess no, sorry. If they have force, we just have counter magic up. They could have the one mana shock effect. Is the restart bug frequent on modern leagues? I'm not. I'm not sure what the restart bug is. So I guess no. But Magus disagrees. Yeah, that's true. Fluster Storm also better against Subtlety. That's true. Press undo when you surgical something, it restarts the game. So, so why are people doing that? Just to be jerks or does it give some tactical advantage? It's kind of cool if you spell starter sprite footfalls and they kill sprite, you still get to counter the footfalls. Games randomly start rare occasions. Yeah, I remember the expressive iteration thing, but I thought that that was over. Just people just do it because they're salty and losing. It's lame. Eric donated five bucks. Thanks, buddy. Trying to get a deck tech. Discard Cryptic Commands. That happened to you late yesterday with Iteration Brutal. I thought that they fixed that. Luris Burn, all right. So when I was building this deck with my friend, we were trying to play, um, we're, we were cutting the Goblin Guides for Darcy's. I also think you could maybe cut Eidolons, but I think that you probably just still want to be on 12 creatures. Um, I, I People keep talking about how big a, an issue Mistress Bobble is with Eidolon, and I'm not going to pretend like there's no tension there. We actually just play four bolts. I'm not going to pretend like there's no tension between Eidolon and Bobble, but the only way it ever comes up is if you top deck Bobble after you play Eidolon, and it's not even like the game just ends when that happens. And Eidolon also does help Delirium with for Darcy. So I, I think that it's probably good to cut Goblin Guide. I think Goblin Guide is the worst creature in the deck if you add Darcy. Um, and it's also true, like the Bobbles all of a sudden synergize. They synergize with Darcy, with Swift Spear, with your Lurus. And they also like can help you like top deck an instant speed burn spell after you like scry with a fetch land. Um, and we have Teferi. This hand is probably just too slow on the draw. But we, I, but I, I think now that we've already mulliganed to 
to six. I think I think that we just can't really afford to mulligan the five. Barry's pretty good against the suspend footfalls. Those are my main my main thoughts. If you don't if you don't end up main decking Eidolon, sideboarding him's fine. Main deck Eidolon's also pretty good at the moment. I might play Shattering Spree over Smash to Smithereens at the moment. Like Shattering Spree, I think is pretty is just such a strong card that uh, you probably just want to be playing it even if it is not giving you any any burn. And I wish I had that turn one Ragavan, huh? I get batter skull. <sighs> what burn which is just over goblin guide? I'm not sure exactly. And I'm not a burn expert. But I would just, you know, look at like I, I think that honestly it's like you play skewers or you play more rift bolts, right? Just don't overthink it too much. This is coming down in two turns. I think I play Ragavan here, pass. And Borrower is going to be really bad for us. Playing a non optimized version of Red Black Monkey and Paper. I only own one spree on Vandal Blast. Is it a fine replacement? Yeah, it's fine. I'm also playing three sprees in the side door. So, so play. I would recommend at least a third blast. What's the best substitute for a spree in blue red and braid by force? Shenanigans? Probably Vandal Blast. By force is fine too. Just don't necessarily recommend it, I guess. I wonder if it's better to play Sword of Feast and Famine here. Probably not. If my opponent bounces the the germ token or the batter skull, I'm gonna go to fairy, bounce a rhino, hopefully draw a white source to add to prismatic ending the other rhino, and then to fairy will at least stop this crashing footfall from coming down if it resolves. All right, they're pausing here, which makes you think that they have an answer for the the batter skull. Looks like they do. I think we're gonna get petty thefted here. Fire on Stoneforge Mystic. And Petty Theft. Okay. So if they have, if their last card is a Force or Subtlety plus Blue card, we lose. But now we get to go... Bouncer Rhino, Lightning Bolt, Charless Agent, Prismatic Ending Rhino. Pretty good. <laughs> A little late force of negation. Oof, it's been a good game. It's been a really good game. Very tense. The land uh, in the top two is pretty clutch there, too. How many Shattering Spree? Probably three, maybe four. Depends on, like, how the metagame shapes up. All right, that fire was pretty good, though. This has been another Footfalls. Pretty beatable, I think. They only have one card left in their hand. They do have Bone Crusher and Exile. Is Mill super common at the moment? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mill's Mill's like pretty popular, and it's also true that like th again, this deck has a really bad Mill matchup. If you don't play a sideboard card for the matchup, I lost to it last night with this deck too. So I think it's po common enough. All right, th this is beatable. The pro green is gonna. It definitely makes me not too worried about this. They need they're gonna need to probably draw another borrower to win. And they probably only they only have one turn, right? And now we have Fluster Storm, which should be enough because we can bolt them to up the storm count.
Yeah, Tasha's is really good against the mill sideboard cards, so it's not like you just win the matchup by putting one card in your sideboard anymore. But I think if you just try to save your counter magic for uh, Tasha's, you'll probably be fine. Oh, I guess they have, they've got two turns. What card is Tasha? Uh, card? What's the card against Tasha's? I mean, it's not a card against Tasha's. We're playing an Ember Cool in the sideboard because it's good against the entire mill deck besides Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And when you play the matchup, I think you're supposed to just try to um, counter the Tasha's. We have some pet card in modern that I'd love to brew around as hard as I can't get it to work. Um, kind of like yes and no. Oh, they did draw a bar at petty theft. Golly. Uh, yes and no. It's like that's not usually my process. I don't usually just go and say I would like to brew around this card I really like. That's not usually how I start to, to brew decks. Usually I start to brew decks by thinking this is a card or interaction that I think is good in the metagame or underexplored, and I would like to try to maximize that uh, concept. Uh, so like today, like today, Spell Starter Sprite is, in my opinion, super good in the metagame against the Hammer Time, Suspend decks, and the, uh, the Darcy Ragavan decks. Uh, Spell Starter Sprite, I think, is very, very good, which is the idea behind what we're doing today. I'm not, and I didn't just go, oh, I like Spell Starter Sprite a lot. I would love to make it work. I want to add one more turn. It's also like in this deck, if you have already tutored up Cauldra or Batter Skull, it's a lot more. All right, back to back one landers. I guess we're going to five. Yeah, sometimes it's thirty. Yeah, yeah. If you know, if you know what the average is supposed to be, then yeah, you get to complain a bit. That's the real value, huh? Well, I hope this is a matchup where turn two to Fairy on the play just wins, but this is a really good mold of five. Any D and D cards like a modern? I like the Dimmy Lich deck we've been working on. Uh, Spider Space yesterday was playing it, or some of it, or a different version, and said that first day of class is really good in the deck because it gives your Dimmy Lich's haste. It also gives um. Also gives your Darcy's haste. It might be good. I might I might be down to try that. Maybe I'll play it off stream. Usually I try to do that kind of stuff off stream. Okay, force pitching fun rattler. So we'll see what control deck we're playing against. Why didn't I play the Exiled one? This is the five mana to fairy, not the three mana one. Yeah, I thought the Chatterstorm was looked pretty bad to me, to be honest. Good draw. Do I upload off stream stuff to YouTube? No. I I don't know. I, it, I, I just like, I don't want to sit and like literally sit and record myself for 10 hours a day. It's too much at some, at one point. I guess if they have their own charm to steal my Ragavan, this is maybe bad. I probably, I'm on a mold of five. I don't know how hard I can afford to play around that. Maybe just draw another charm, steal it back. Could draw it to Fairy Time Raveler, bounce it. Hmm, Spell Sitter Sprite's not too good, though. Do we get Feast and Famine? Do I block? I don't think so. <laughs> we'll see if they're a Stone Blade deck. Well, I guess Spell Starter Sprite's not going to be that good against them. They're playing no one drops. I guess there's no Prismatic Ending. They counterspell the Sprite? Golly. They have Force Blue card as their last two cards. Maybe I should use the Treasure here. 
Yeah, I probably should have used the treasure to save two life. <laughs> Skirt Colonnade. Well, they're. I mean, the card's got to be better than Colonnade, right? They're probably a spell. All right. Not too worried about that. Then Storm did get Probe Band. No, it wasn't Storm. It was mo mostly Infect, actually, was like the best uh, Probe deck. Oh, now we can steal our. Uh, <laughs> can steal our Ragavan back. Five mana? Six mana is this Typhoon? Oh, I like the cut of your jib, opponent. Make sure to respawn before they get to draw the card from Typhoon so they can't have force here because they only have one card right now. I guess if they kill my shark token with like a bounce spell, I'll want to have the Snipecaster be a 4-3 to block Ragavan. It is card Terminus. Shark Typhoon and Terminus in the same deck is a little sus. Not that big a deal though. It also means it's unlikely that they're going to have um They did have a bounce spell. This means it's unlikely they're going to have a Supreme Verdict. Well, give me back my monkey. Discard Hero of Dominaria. No Miracle Terminus. Right there, dead on board to this Jays, and they can't cast any one drop, so we should win here, right? I guess they could have Mishra's Bobble Terminus and White Source. Would be the best three cards possible. Kind of asking for a lot. Just probably don't have Mishra's Bobble in their deck. Something like this. Just one Prismatic Ending for. Chal I guess Chalice is kind of obnoxious. So we could play like two bolts, three endings. Book of Exalted Deeds got banned in standard already? No way. That's got to be a joke, right? The set's only been out for like a week. Is it just like that good with the white land? Take out Batter Skull? Maybe. This maybe only banned at the 2022 event. Well, I don't know what that is. Oh, I, I, how am I supposed to know what that is? <laughs> it's not banned in standard, it's just banned in a standard event, the made up arena events because people can't be bothered to play removal. Well, uh, well, I will just never understand the decisions they make around arena. I'll be right back, chat. Promo 2 to 3 is pretty impressive stuff. I mean, just like I built this deck to beat up on the kind of decks we're playing against, we went O2 against Boomer Jund and Ponza, which are like both seem like pretty unwinnable matchups. Is fourth ending better than Bolt because of Chalice and Teferi? That's that's my that's why I have it. Oh, I, I guess I think that the three three splits may be fine, but it's like Prismatic Ending is a fine answer to those cards, but you just like never really want to draw two. Closing out the games with bolts can be pretty good. I'm just gonna hold up Charm here. It is kind of crazy that decks can't deal with Faceless Haven. I'm gonna draw two, I think. My opponent's probably gonna steal my monkey. We draw all to fear, we get to bounce the monkey, win the game. If not, we could like just prismatic ending or bolt the monkey, play Stone Forge. This is also totally fine. 
Yeah, Sprite's not that good at this matchup because they're not playing. Um, their one mana removal is Prismatic Ending. So I guess, I, I mean, we, we'll hold up the spell starter Sprite and hope to be able to deal with it. The best removal in standard is power kill of Mrs. Changelings. Well, can't you play different removal though because of that? Isn't that like the whole point of formats is that you just can't be good against everything? I'm probably preaching to the choir. But I just kind of feel like that's the whole point of of <laughs> of, of like metagames and like we're not playing chess. Like you get to pick your different tools for the job, you know? I, oh, this this line is pretty bad against uh, Archimedes' Charm, huh? Didn't seem like they had it last turn, though. Like, is Shock? No, it, it, it has three toughness, yeah. But also, you can play Artifact Removal. Oh, no. Okay, 1-1 one, one Typhoon, that's fine. I guess we basically outside the red colors don't have to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking out of turn for sure. Like, I haven't been playing standard. I don't really know exactly what the metagame looks like. I don't know what's good. I don't know what's not good. But if you have a standard environment that can't either deal with a three mana artifact that costs three mana to activate, uh, it, it's like their, their combo is also, it's also six mana, right? It's nine mana. They play their, they play their book. They activate face. They activate the thing. It's a total of nine mana to do, and it, it, it's it's so expensive, right? And it, and it gets blown out by any three damage burn spell or any anything that kills this creature. And so, if if there is no answer for it in the metagame, or if there are not good answers, then then I think you've had you have a badly designed standard. You mean it's best of one? <sighs> Well, I mean, this is maybe the problem with best of one. If both players have it, the combo, then the game never ends. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. They chalice on two? Is that good? Doesn't seem that good. We could just prismatic ending it. I, I don't even know if I want to. Oh, we should. Probably is banning it in best of one. Yeah, it's whatever, right? I, I like, I'm not like, I'm not the person to ask about what decisions are best for, for arena, for standard. Just, it's just, I'm just saying that it all sounds weird. <laughs> Excel verdict from the top of their library. The event is standard 2022 for the, oh, I see, I see. I, I now understand what standard 22 means. One minute to answer their four mana spell is pretty good. <laughs> Cast the verdict. That's probably the only chance our opponent has, huh? Playing Zagoth Triumph? Or are they playing Bring to Light? We saw Teferi Hero and Jace, the Mind Sculptor game one. I cast Spell Stutter Sprite. Cast Spell Stutter Sprite. They could have played around that by paying three for ending. Yeah, or just two. I don't think they've seen a Sprite yet this game, have they? No, they did. They counterspelled one earlier. I think we're going to be 4 0, oh, chat. Let's go ahead and get the 5 0 prediction going, huh? We trophied yesterday. Be cool the trophy with a new deck it's definitely it's definitely a deck i've built like you know to attack what i perceive the metagame to be let's keep this hand put back snap We're on the draw against luris on a mulligan not a great matchup to mulligan in but our deck is you know theoretically good against luris decks looks like it's hammer time i did make the claim earlier that our deck should chew up and spit out hammer time I'm gonna prismatic ending shadow spear here. That might not end up being the case, but honestly, if we don't have a good hammer time matchup, maybe there's a problem in the format where uh don't look at that, don't look at that. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh where we have uh 
Not only spell starter sprite, archmage's charm, eight one mana removal spells, including four prismatic ending, but in the sideboard we have Kataki Alpine Moon Wear Tear. We have like eight really good sideboard cards. So if this if this matchup ends up being bad, then maybe we're in for some trouble, huh? I'm gonna get a Cauldre here, I think. I think they're, they're probably gonna spend their mana on Saga next turn. The fact that they, they don't have Shadow Spear in their deck anymore though makes Cauldre really, really good. Isn't Kataki a terrible answer to Hammer Time? No, it's not. It it does it's not literally two mana win the game, but people people do seem to be under the impression it's like it's bad. It it is not bad, in my opinion. Like like the, yeah, it, it's it's very often quite an impact a, a very impactful card against them. They play lots of zero mana artifacts. They play Springleaf Drum. They play Esper Sentinel. It's good against the the Saga cards. It's 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 a good card against them, but it's not literally two mana win the game. And it's it's always. I don't know. I always get a bit annoyed when people s s call a card that isn't literally two mana win the game a bad card in matchups like this. They, oh, they, they do play Shadow Spear or Spider, but we exiled it with uh, Prismatic Ending. Are we done on board? No. I don't think so. Perhaps you've forgotten how. Okay, well, now, now I think we're done on board. No, we're not. No, we're not. We can steal. We can steal a Midmite with a hammer on it in the beginning of combat step. And then, um, chump block one of the, one of these and then trade for the other one. We're in really bad shape though. They also get to move the hammer around post combat. Yeah, I don't think we get to win the game, but we're not literally dead on board. I guess I can trade Midmites. Is that good? What's the best way to attack Hammer Time? Is Shattering Street best cyborg card against them? I mean, I think that you need to have like a lot of different cyborg cards against them. Like Kataki and Shattering Spear are good against them, but they don't just win the game. Alpine Moon is good against them, but it doesn't just win the game. Wear Terror is good against them too. Um, but there, I, there isn't like any one card that just totally smashes them. Yeah, I probably should just be packing it in. Yeah, Crime Punishment, that card's very good against them. Okay, I, I just don't have outs. Probably should have conceded like a minute ago. But we've got a ton of sideboard cards. So I'm gonna cut my Ragavans. A Spell Starter Sprite is also, I think, very good against them. I think I wanna go down onto Fairies, play Sword of Fire Ice, over Feast and Famine. Try to cut the third snap. Cut the second force, maybe. Let's cut the fourth counter spell. Yeah, Tasha's Hideous Laughter is also good against them, yeah. Deflecting Palm is probably pretty good against Hammer Time, huh? It only like actually kills them though if they nexus you. If they're only if they're not if they're not killing you with the hammer, it can be a bit awkward. Is Force Negation good in the matchup? It's like, it's fine, yeah. It can get you out of some sticky situations. Like, you're also usually pretty happy to force Urza's or, or Sigarda's aid. I think the first two forces are usually cards I want. Ever tried using Godson and Stoneblade? No, I have respect for myself. <laughs> I have a taste and uh, I like to sometimes win games of magic. Would that be better than one, one of the living weapons? Maybe. Maybe. Palm on Nexus does not kill opponent. It doesn't deal infect damage. Mm. It's a bummer. I guess with the presence of Prismatic Ending, actually, you need Force Less to deal with uh, cards like Sigarda's Aid, so maybe we should cut the forces, actually. Not the best draw. I'm just gonna prismatic ending the stone for or the giver here. I usually wait to play Alpine Moon until they play out saga so we get to stone rain them. 
It's also true sometimes you want to name Inkmoth Nexus with this card. Awesome. They have Stoneforge. They have Seal of Cleansing. Oh, I shouldn't have F6'd. Oh, we, that was a really good draw. I don't really care if they Seal of Cleansing my Alpine Moon. Oh, dude, yeah, Manriki is really good against them. Holy crap. Is that just genius? Manriki Gusari against Hammer Time? It's, it's a little slow. It's a little slow, but it seems good, right? They have another Saga. Oh, they have a two-minute spell, too. <laughs> Good rip, huh? Opponent rude in chat here. It's not going to engage, I think. They're up a game. They can still win game three. You get to be on the play for game three, opponent. You don't need to be upset. You get to be on the play for game three. You also might still win this game. You don't know. See if they hate the... Maybe they'll concede to Spell Stutter Sprite. This, this might tilt them too. <laughs> or maybe they think I'm cool now that I'm playing Spell Stutter Sprite. Yeah, imagine playing the best deck of the format and being mad when your opponent draws sideboard cards. Probably worth a counterspell, huh? They got a uh, Colossus Hammer with Stoneforge Mystic. So their hand is Hammer Mystery card here. A bit worried about their Luris, to be honest, this game. We don't have too much left going on. All right, don't think I'm gonna, not going to Prismatic Ending here. Pretty good. Dex the hammer though. Prismatic ending the paladin. Now I don't have an answer to Luris. Is this deck really better than Merktide? Well, contrary to popular belief, I like to try new things and you know, experiment a bit. A bit. I don't, don't remember ever claiming that it was better. I don't think they have hammer in their hand. But I think, like, specifically, Spell Stutter Sprite's very good in the metagame. If you aren't running red as one condemn, viable? Maybe, yeah. Kim seems fine. Yeah, this is the game where we double stone rain them. Drawing, I mean, we did we did mulligan this game, I think. No, I don't know. Their deck is very resilient. Oh, well, scary. It's a good draw. Maybe I want to leave the spell starter sprite back to block Nexus. And probably better to keep the aggro going. I think we're at the point where is it Staticaster is a viable sideboard card? Yeah, Staticaster is probably fine. Did not steal Nexus, Charm is non land. I think we're gonna draw two. We have enough mana that I'm not too worried about Esper Sentinel. Still the aid, flash in, cauldron, genius. I'm gonna leave the sprite back to block here. We'll just hardcast the cauldron next turn. They do get to draw a card, but then they're gonna die really quick to it. 
Hopefully their last card is Urza Saga. I feel like that's one of the few cards that makes sense. They just haven't been playing whatever it is. Yeah, opponent just says, like, I, I'm really happy they just have never gone for Luris this game. They might have Path. Path could be a card that they have in hand here. We could just equip next turn. Any equippers in chat? Three down to six. Counter spell up technically. Oh. <laughs> hey, Cauldra attached to a spell starter sprite. Today's a good day. I didn't block. How would they block? As first strike trample indestructible. Flying. <laughs> it's got a lot of it's got a lot of uh, words that make blocking not that good. Yeah, now they're gonna block because they're just mad. Honestly, it's like really good for us that they're fuming, right? Because they're gonna play worse if they're fuming. All right, yeah, I think I think with the prismatic endings, force of negation is not as good as uh, it used to be. So I'm going to go bring in the third Snapcaster Mage and either fourth Counterspell, first Ragavan, second Teferi. I'll just play fourth Counterspell. You can play first Force. I think just like, I'm kind of scared of Luris, so I'll play the Counterspell. Right, game three. What happened if they gave protection to a creature and blocked it? Let's keep this. Protection to a creature and then blocked it? I'm confused. All right, the trample the trample still tramples over. I guess that's what you're asking. Alright, look, Kataki would be our best draw here. <laughs> Good at drawing the second Alpine Moon, I guess. Might have Snapcaster block Esper Sentinel this game. Yeah, shout out to the Kataki Bad Against Hammer Time crowd. Both players with a kind of awkward draw. I kind of want to counterspell their hammer this turn. Although I guess it just like if we cigar is if we prismatic ending this, we make it to where um, their hammers are not very good. And I guess I'll just cast the Alpine Mood now. I die to one one beats. I'm not gonna Alpine Moon Scion clearing. I mean Saga. Good draw. Yeah, it actually isn't impossible that they were sandbagging Saga, just not that likely. Take three more down to five. Hopefully we get to sprite something post combat. They've got so many cheap creatures. If not, I think I still have to, I have to just play the sprite. There we go. Are we really just gonna die to Midmite Beats? It's kind of a really anticlimactic way for this to end. <sighs> Not really where I want to be using this counter spell either. I mean that it does. <sighs> Need to draw Kataki, Stoneforge Mystic, Arc Mage's Charm. 
What a bad way to lose. Taki doesn't even do it anymore. Stoneforge Mystic doesn't do it anymore. It has to be exactly Charm or Snapcaster. Aren't we drawing dead? Don't you hear me talking about all my outs? Not, not that many outs, but we have some. <sighs> Sad. Said that before you talk about them, fair enough. Sad, sad, sad. It always feels so frustrating to lose to people who complain about your luck. If you're going to complain about your opponent's luck, you'd better win the match. Personal pet peeve of mine.